We'll start with doing something like a clarinet. A clarinet is a single reed instrument, and in the bottom octave, it sounds particularly close to a square wave. So let's start with a square wave. Let's try to make the attack a little bit slower. Now, it's a bit bright, so we'll filter it down a bit. Try another filter. Okay, that sounds kind of clarinet-like. Let's do just a little bit. Okay, so now in order to give it more performance nuances, it's often a good idea to add vibrato. I'm told that classical clarinet players don't use vibrato very much, but I know jazz players do. So what we can do, we can add some vibrato. Let's just add some here. Obviously too fast. And if we wanted to, we could use the wheel to control it. But we may want to use some vibrato that automatically comes in. To do that, we can use the modulation envelope. The modulation envelope generator has got two different modes. One where it starts at maximum value and then decays to zero, and the other it starts at zero and goes to maximum. That's the attack mode. We'll use that to control our vibrato. So we'll make our attack hmm, pretty big, like three or four seconds, and then we'll use it to control the amplitude of the LFO by changing this in the router here. So when we play our note, nothing, and we turn it up. So you'll notice I've put these two back together so we're not using the wheel at all. And everything is being controlled by the uh, modulation envelope. So it starts with no vibrato and then increases. They can make it increase more quickly, almost instantly. It sounds a bit big, let's make it smaller. Now that's vaguely clarinet-like. A real clarinet player will not accept that, but we will for now. Now what we could do is also make it sound more like a double reed instrument, like an oboe or a bassoon or a clarinet. The easiest way to start doing that is to change our waveform so that we're using more of a narrow pulse wave. Let's listen. And let's filter it down a little. the filter shapes. Adding a bit of resonance there. Just quickly experiment with the other filters. Ooh. 
Now, what we can also do is we can reduce the number of voices so that uh, we can start to get it gliding, which is not very useful in a classical emulation of an oboe or a bassoon or something, but quite often useful. Now, if we were to add some reverb to that, too much glide, turn off. So now we have an analog synthesizer sound, kind of like a double read. <laughs> 